Okay, so this recording shows how you can convert your pressures into depths in the crust using Thermobar. So as normal, go to the Read the Docs page, scroll down to Other Functions, click on Convert Pressures to Depths, click here to download this notebook, and click here to download the spreadsheet, and there's a separate video showing how to do that. Put these two files somewhere on your computer that you can navigate to, and then get however you run Jupyter Notebooks. So I am in Jupyter Lab. So we are gonna go and click on this file, which is the one we want. If you haven't installed Thermobar, you'll have to uncomment this, but let's assume you have. So first we import Thermobar and all the other Python things we're gonna need. We can have a quick look at what this uh, file looks like. So I'm just gonna sort by type so I can see. So we are basically um, looking for this file example, liquid pyroxene amphibole. So in this case, here we go, this is the one. So what you can see is in this case, we're gonna be using the pyroxene data. So this is just compiled data. We have all of the oxides with CPX after them. Okay. So now we're gonna go back to our Jupyter notebook and we're gonna load this. And this returns a dictionary and we're just going to pull out the CPX compositions using this line here. And then we're going to check that they've read in right and there's no obvious columns full of zeros where there shouldn't be. Okay, now we are going to calculate pressure using um, C the CPX only pressure temperature function. So in this case, we are using equation 32D from Paterka 2008 and equation 32B. So we're going to run that and you can see it gives some warnings, don't worry about this, this is my problem to sort out, it's not a problem, it's just telling me future versions of Python, I'm going to have to change something. So you can see we've got a calculated pressure in kilobars and a calculated temperature and then some other parameters which are described in the thermobar paper. But we don't often think in pressure, if we want to compare this to geophysics, we want it in terms of depths. So to sort of see the options, you can run the help function on PT convert pressure to depth you can see there are kind of all of these models and there's a bit of a description here on to how to use them. So I'm going to show you some examples of that now, but just know that documentation is there if you need it. So let's just look at what these models look like. So first we're going to make a synthetic array of pressures between 0.5 kilobars and 10 kilobars and we want 10 of them so they're kind of evenly spaced. First we're going to use the density model from Lerner et al 2021 based on Ryan. So here we say convert pressure to depth. We give our pressure array in terms of P kilobar here. So that's one input and the second is the model we want to use. And then we're just running this for three different models and you can read about those in the documentation. And we're simply gonna plot pressure against calculated depth. So you can see this is what the different models look like. So you can see they don't look that different, but you can kind of assess you know, what the difference is. Alternatively, you might not want to use someone's density model. Perhaps one doesn't exist for your tectonic setting of interest. So very simply, you can use the same function with a constant crustal density. So here we're saying 2,700 kilograms per meter cubed all the way through the crust. And you can just specify G so that you can change this for other planetary bodies. Or perhaps you are looking at kind of a system where you have a crust that you think has a density of 2,700 and a moho that you think has sort of, you have a moho and then below that you have the mantle which you think has a density of 3,300. You can specify model is two step and then you just need to give the depth of the transition in kilometers. So here I'm saying the moho is at 13 kilometers. I can also do a, a three step model here. So we're just gonna change this to read three step. So you can see now what I am saying is I maybe have a volcanic pile, maybe this is La Palma or Hawaii. So let's have a density of 2,500 kilograms per meter cubed above five kilometers depth, and then sort of 2,900 between five and 14, maybe this is your oceanic crust. And then you have a third transition into sort of moho. So you can plot this and you can see these are what sort of the three density profiles look like. I'm just gonna rename this one, three step. And there you go, that would be what they look like. Okay, so say you've looked at these and you've decided uh, what you want for your pressures. 
So this was just kind of so that you can you can visualize the density profiles. We're going to use the same function, but instead of loading in our synthetic array, so P array, we're going to load in this data frame. So this is called calc P, and we want the data stored in the column P kilobar calc. So we feed this in as calc P, column P kilobar calc, and that is going to convert all of our calculated CPX only pressures into depths using the density model of Ryan and Lerner. We can run that and we can plot a histogram. So this is what the depths look like. Let's say we want to do the same calculation, but using that constant crystal density of 2700. Well, we can do that too. And we can plot the depths. So you can use this with any of the sort of thermobile functions that return pressure, or you can use this with any other thing where you want to convert pressures into depths in the crust, maybe melt inclusion saturation pressures.